Serving all of San Diego, this is your Fox 5 News. You got some little kitties in the room. Why don't you just scoot them out? Okay, because we're starting out what's fact and fiction. Are they out surrounding sex and during pregnancy and postpartum? And they asked me to do this. Isn't this fun? Oh, well, Dr. Irvin Goldstein, editor-in-chief of the Journal of Sexual Medicine, and Dr. Rose Hartzell. She's a sex therapist at San Diego Sexual Medicine. They're here with a look. This is some new findings. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. First of all, thank you so much for doing this. Fox 5 is awesome. Oh. Oh, thank just, you. just to tell the audience, there, there's four babies every minute, <laughs> 10,000 every day, and four million every year just in the U.S. So just in the U.S. We're talking about a lot of women who are pregnant. Okay, we're talking about women who are pregnant and men that are with the women that are pregnant. Right. That the it comes down to when a woman's pregnant. Okay, let's stop. Right. So there's a lot of myths. So we're going okay. to try and debunk some of, some of these myths. Are we ready? We are ready. We are ready. Okay. Let's get through uh, these myths. Myth number one: you say, uh, some say that sex during pregnancy could harm the baby. I've heard this before. Not good for the baby. Don't do it. Okay. So rare. There are times when the placenta is low, the cervix is early dilated, the vaginal bleeding happens, uh, multiple babies inside rare stuff. I mean, if you're concerned, go see your doctor. Okay. There's a lot of positive things about relationships, and we're going to talk about that okay. right now. Yeah, sex during uh, pregnancy is actually good for the relationship, and if you don't have those contraindications, then it's you might need to make some physical changes, change the position, because there's a little... Uh, be a little creative because the body is different, but for the most part, it's actually good for all, the relationship. All nine, ten months, go for it. Go for it. Okay, myth number two, sexual desire decreases during pregnancy. The moms are going, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And nauseous and other things. But the reality is during the second trimester, a lot of women who say, I have more desire I've ever had, and sex has been the best for me. It's second trimester, Second really? trimester, yeah. Testosterone is highest at that point, by the way. What happens in the third trimester? Uh, things fall in, in the third trimester. The baby's descending. You're the biggest possible, so there's a lot of <laughs> physical issues. I like that, Dr. Issues. Goldstein. Thank you. You're <laughs> the biggest possible. <laughs> uh, there's hemorrhoids, and God knows what else we're talking about here. So, so the thing is, the third trimester is the least uh, uh, likely time. Okay. Uh, here's myth number three. Vaginal childbirth results in decreased sexual satisfaction. Is that a myth or not? You go, because it's really? definitely a myth. <laughs> yeah. Really, the mode of delivery isn't as important as the couple's uh, communication and satisfaction with each other. The truth is, if, if a couple is satisfied, if they're communicating well, and if they're, um, once again, being sensual, maybe if you can't have sexual activity right after intercourse, trying different... Uh, sexual activities that you can engage in, they're actually, it doesn't, the, the motor delivery doesn't make Does a not difference. Make, okay, here's a this is a time for fun and exploration mm -hmm. and innovation, and that's what's cool about pregnancy. Honestly. You're so awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, here's the final one. Women are the only ones whose sexual health is impacted by pregnancy and birth. What's the truth? Well, men get affected. Oh, yes, they do. Men, men, uh, men, that's why the communication is so important. Men could be watching for the first time something that they may uh, remember uh, um, not to be like it was uh, at the beginning when they were dating. Right. But I mean, this is just being a father and a mother and, and growing and up. They and they get scared too sometimes, <laughs> right? Like they, they say, oh, I don't want to hurt the baby. I don't want to hurt the baby or I don't want to hurt the woman. After yeah. they've seen the birth, it can be a little scary for the man. Don't, she doesn't want to hurt her partner. Yeah. Okay, so there's a fifth myth. Oh, there is? Yes, the fifth myth is if you have sexual problems that persist beyond the six month mark. Yes. Go see a doctor. Go see a doctor. Some okay. people say, ever since Johnny was born, I haven't been the same. And they say, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. But go see a go doctor. See a we doctor. can help make it better. Well, Dr. Uh, Goldstein <laughs> and uh, Dr. Hartzell, thank you for being here. The takeaway from this is, is have some fun, right? Have some Don't fun. let having a baby stop well, you from anything. This is about a sharing share. experience. Uh, you can learn more about both of them at the San Diego Sexual Medicine at Alvarado Hospital, FoxSideSanDiego.com. Mm. Click. Seen on tap. Did you learn something, Raul? Because I sure did. Yes. We mentioned that that, that activity actually helps with the uh, uh, natural birthing <laughs> process. Yes. Yes. And and that's true. It's the it's the. Uh, what it helps with the birthing process? Yeah. Yes. It relaxes you. It's. Uh, um, it um, helps. How did you know that? <laughs> I have a 15-month-old baby. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very active. <laughs> That's why we love that our favorite guest ever. But you're right about the after the baby's born. That's a whole different set of rules and it's a whole deal. Thank you guys so much. Thank you know you I so love much. it when you guys are here.
Always take my notes. <laughs> All right, thank you guys.